Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to be working with part three of Don't Be Afraid of Blender, and we're going to model this band using proportional editing tools. That is a big part of part three, and it's going to extend into part four. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, share it on social media. All the sharing you do helps my video grow. So let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are with Blender 2.8 running and we're going to start by making a new ring. Shift A brings up our add menu and we're going to come down and add a circle. We're going to come over to the items tab and we're going to select 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by zero. And here we have the beginnings of our new mounting. The next thing I want to do is double the number of vertices. So I'm going to make that 64. Press enter and oh, again we have to change the size <clears throat> okay so here's the beginning of our new mounting 20 millimeters in diameter and I'm gonna enter edit mode by pressing the tab key and you'll notice over here I've got the screen keys turned on tab and I'm going to make sure that all are selected by making sure that they're all orange. The next step is to press E for extrude, then S to size, and then we're going to move our mouse in and form a flat ring. While remaining in edit mode, we're going to come over here to the faces section. We have these three buttons here, faces, edges, and vertices. We're going to select faces, press A to select all extrude and then Z so that we are extruding along the Z axis and we'll bring that up to about here and that is our ring the basics of our ring the next step is we are going to model this with rounded edges nobody likes to put a ring on with a sharp edge because it doesn't feel comfortable so let's select our edge tool up here and now we're going to select a bottom edge. Press the shift and alt key, hold them down, select the edges along the parameter. By the, the shift alt selects all of those in a line. While still holding the shift and alt key, we'll press the we'll select the next edge, which is the top outer edge. Then we'll select the top inner edge. And then over here we'll select the top bottom or the bottom inner edge. All four edges are selected. Press the tab key to go to object mode. Right click, oh, I'm sorry, so with the ring selected, press control A and that brings up our apply menu. We're going to apply rotation and scale. That allows Blender to reorient the ring. Let's go back into edit mode by pressing the tab key and then press control B to add a bevel to all the edges selected and we'll just give it a nice little chamfer to edge using your mouse wheel give this a little rounded curve I'm going to select four I'm going to left click and there we are now I'll press tab to enter in object mode we're going to rotate this along the x-axis R then X the 90 press enter and we've rotated that 90 degrees along the x-axis So what I really want to cover here is what's called proportional editing. And proportional editing allows us to make adjustments to a specific part of this mounting or any model, but in this case the mounting, and make minor adjustments to vertices, edges, and faces that are alongside what we're editing. So I'm going to show you that here. And what I'm going to do is orient this vertically by pressing the one key enter edit mode by pressing the tab key okay so with the ring oriented vertically I'm gonna press and hold the shift and alt key and select I'll select the top edge here and that should allow us to select an entire ring around the perimeter of the band I'm gonna zoom in just to this area 
what I want to cover here is the proportional editing or proportional sizing in this case. If we don't use any proportional editing and I press S to size this ring or this band, you'll see it kind of just does weird things to it and I can make changes to it, but it, it only affects that one edge. Press the right key to cancel that. So if we look up here, this little box here with the little on off switch and then we have a selection here we can select different types of proportional movement we're going to leave it on smooth I'm going to turn proportional editing on by clicking this little button here and that'll turn blue and now if I come over and I press S you'll see that there's a circle here and that circle can be enlarged and decreased by the scroll wheel on your mouse when I move my cursor you'll see that I give it a little more influence and I can make changes to not just that ring that's selected but all the areas around it and adjust the area how I want it to look. So let's do this again. I'm going to press S. I'm going to change my circle to about here and then I'm going to size it out. I'm going to left click to make my change semi-permanent and then let's take a look at this again you notice we deform the ring all across the vertices we made it larger on the X Y and Z axis what I want to do is keep the circumference of the ring and only change the width so I'm going to press control Z to cancel this the width of the band would be the Y axis so I'll select S then I'll press Y and now I can only size this along the Y axis. So I'm going to make this a little bigger and we'll just kind of come out to here. And now we've made a ring. When I look at it vertically, it looks perfect. But when we look at it from the top or the sides, we see we have a little pattern that we've made here. I'm going to cancel that. <clears throat> I'm going to add some edge loops to the middle of the band. To add an edge or to add loops into the center of the ring, you press Control R, and then I can add as many as I want. I think five is good. Press the left button twice to make that permanent. Now, in this case, I want to do something a little fancy, which is going to lead to part four of this. But again, we're just learning how to use the proportional editing, so I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to press and hold the shift key and the alt key. <clears throat> I'm going to select this edge loop here. I'm going to come down to this one here and we'll follow that across to this one here. So now I have those three edge loops selected and I want to proportionately size those. So I'll turn the proportionate editing on. With the proportional editing on, I'm going to press S then Y and I'm just going to make those a little wider. i do it like that. Well, that's too big, so let's just size that down. That looks good to me. Okay. Now, one more thing to consider is that on the bottom of a ring, typically, let's deselect all our vertices usually the bands somewhat narrower along the bottom and I don't mean narrower this way not typically this way but when we look at the band from a side you see this ring is straight down but typically we have a little taper that might come in you know it might be 20 percent smaller in width at the bottom just to give the ring a little more interest so let's hold the shift key down and the alt key down and select this bottom loop and with that loop selected, I'm going to press the S key and the Y key. And I'm going to make that a little narrower. But I want that to be a little narrower across most of the band. So I'm going to increase the size of the influence circle. Just about like that. Now if I look at the ring here, you can see we have a nice little taper on the left and right side. And we still have our interesting little design that we've put into the pattern along the top and the sides.
<clears throat> so again, let's look at that. We've got this three rings here. Press S, Y, we'll make those. We'll give that a little bit of a pattern. And with that turned in like that, deselect all our loops, select the bottom, shift, alt, hold those down, select that ring, and then we'll just taper those in. S, Y, and we'll make our influences slightly larger. Again, now we have a nice taper. Go back to modeling mode, and you can see our ring is, is pretty cool looking the way it is. So I want you to test, uh, make some pieces, play with the proportional editing. You can do some fantastic things. You don't have to make a mounting. You could just do it with squares, circles, whatever. Play around with it, get used to it. In part four, we're actually gonna finish this piece. We're gonna add three small holes and we're going to put some diamonds in there, render it, and show, uh, show you what it would look like getting ready to show a customer. Practice, practice, practice. This is part three. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.